Hi, I'm Chris Bradbury. I'm the Drone Support Officer for the British Model Flying Association as well as the British Drone Flyers. I'm here today to share information and build the community because we believe United We Achieve. So in this video I'd like to talk to you about sub 250 gram drones as well as the A1 open category as I quite often get asked the same questions as well as seeing the same misinformation online. So let's dive in and see what a few of these questions are. So the first question I get asked an awful lot is do I need an operator ID if my aircraft is under 250 grams and the simple answer is yes because it has a camera. Any camera drone, regardless of its weight, even if it is under 250 grams, must display a valid operator ID. The operator ID must be written in alphanumerics, which means numbers and letters, and must be a minimum of 3 millimeters high. This means you can't turn the number into a QR code or barcode, for example, to try and save space. The code must also be displayed on the main body of the aircraft, so don't put this code on your battery as that can be removed, make sure it is on the main airframe and it also must be displayed in a position that does not require tools to access it. The next question I get asked an awful lot is, do I require a flyer ID for an aircraft under 250 grams? Now, the answer here is no, you don't. However, we would certainly recommend that you do practice for the test or take the test as you'll learn important safety and legal information by doing so. If you're a member of the British Model Flying Association or a British drone flyer, this does also mean that you can take our own RCC test if you prefer, as some of the questions in there may be more relevant to the way you fly. So the next question I get asked an awful lot is, is it really okay to just fly my sub 250 gram drone anywhere? And the answer here is no. But I think the myth comes from the fact that when you look at documents such as CAP 2012, it only really specifies three things for the sub 250 gram drones. One, that there is no minimum separation distance to uninvolved people. Two, that you can overfly uninvolved people. And that three, you must not overfly crowds of people, whether they are under your control or not. So that looks fairly simple. However, let's break this down a little bit more into those three key aspects. Although there is no minimum separation distance specified for the A1 open category for drones under 250 grams, a little bit of common sense and also looking at the air navigation order laws as a whole will need to be taken into consideration. If we look at Article 241 of the air navigation order, it clearly specifies that we must not fly in a manner that would endanger either recklessly or negligently any person or their property. So consider a scenario of flying from a beach if there are people picnicking next to you within a few metres, is it really safe to fly there or would it be safer to move 30 to 40 metres down towards an empty area of beach first? Consider what might happen if your drone was to enter failsafe and return back on its own using GPS. Is the accuracy guaranteed to be only a half a metre or is there a risk of it landing four or five metres away from where you originally took off from? So like I said, a little bit of common sense and plan safely. Although overflight is specified as possible for sub 250 gram drones in the A1 open category, if you read CAP 722 as a guidance document, it does specify in many locations that overflight should always be avoided where possible and only performed when absolutely necessary. So yes, in the A1 open category you can overfly people, but where possible avoid it. So again, coming back to flying from a beach, if you want to fly and take a shot from a specific location, Think about the flight path from where you take off to where you want to hover. Can you do that without overflying people or would moving further down the beach again give you a better position to take off and fly to that location without overflying people? Hopefully the reason for not overflying crowds is fairly obvious but I think it is important to specify what a crowd actually is. Under the old legislation a crowd used to be a group of 1000 people or more. However, under the new legislation, it is more about assemblies of people. And believe it or not, an assembly of people can be as few as just two people. Now, it seems a bit bizarre, I know, but bear with me. 
If you take the beach scenario that we've already discussed, if the beach is say one acre in size and is a good big area, 20 or 30 people can be considered that they could run in any direction if an emergency situation happened. So let's say your drone loses control and is crashing onto the beach, people can run away. If that beach is now crowded with 300 people, people will start to run into each other and they won't be able to escape, at which point that is classed as an assembly of people. So the key element here is, can the people in the area escape? So when you take the example I made of just two people, let's pop them on a tennis court, which has a fence all the way around it because they're playing tennis and we don't want the balls to escape. If they're now in the situation where the drone is crashing towards them, they can't necessarily run in any direction because they're fenced in. This creates an area where they can't escape, therefore making them an assembly of people. Now, two people as an assembly is pretty extreme as an example, so please just take a little bit of common sense and consider what you would class as an assembly of people before deciding if you would overfly them or not. So the last thing I'm going to discuss here when it comes to can I fly anywhere is not committing trespass in the first place. Consider the location you're flying from and whether you have permission to take off from the land. If you take the beach scenario I've already mentioned, that beach could be public, it could be open to all, or it could be owned and run by a private individual or organisation, or it could be council land and therefore subject to various bylaws. A classic example here is anywhere that's owned and run by the National Trust. The area and land in question is quite often open to the public for you to go walking and enjoy nature. However, they have regulations and laws regarding the use of their land, one of which being no drones. So just bear in mind that although there is no minimum separation distance, and yes, you can overfly people, just remember you might not have permission to use the land to take off.